I offer a bribe to the internet. Cats. I may even caption this one. Today's vlog is actually the exact same subject as what Friday's vlog was. The reason why I'm redoing it is that, well, things weren't very concise or accurate-ish. I mean, what I said on Friday was accurate, it's just that I did not do a very good job at actually presenting the information. So I'm fixing that today. I am going to tell you all about the heartbreak exploit that many of you may have heard about. I am also going to tell what you as a person can do. The link that I'm pointing to over here takes you to an XKCD comic strip of, well, exactly what heartbreak is. Randall Monroe is awesome when it comes to stick figures, and he explains it pretty much perfectly. Go check it out. What is Heartbreak? Heartbreak is an exploit in the program called OpenSSL. No, this probably isn't a program installed on your computer, but you use it. Indirectly. So, OpenSSL is one method of implementing what's called an SSL or TLS protocol. What does that really mean? Well. You know how, depending on your browser, you either see a lock symbol or a green HTTPS thing or anything like that whenever you try to log into a website? You might see it next to the address bar. That is what we're talking about. So that protocol is, so for a short version, that protocol is what allows you to send passwords, credit card information, banking information, all sorts of personal information, lots and lots of different things across the internet without other people being able to read it other than the intended recipient. OpenSSL is the implementation used by a large majority of websites on the internet. I mean, very large. Um, according to Netcraft, it's roughly two thirds of the internet use Apache or Nginx, the two web serving applications that primarily use OpenSSL. Theoretically, this exploit may be impacting two thirds of the internet. No, it's actually not. So allow me to describe what really happened. So presumably you are running Windows or Mac or Linux or something, and you know how you get bugged with automatic updates and most people just ignore them for a long time? The OpenSSL exploit has been around for about two years. Developers are even worse about updating their stuff than us computer users. There's actually a very large chunk of the internet that are on older versions of OpenSSL where they don't need to worry about this. Then there's also portions of the internet that are on different technologies. Um, we're talking about at most two thirds of the internet, probably more like one third of the internet. It's still pretty bad though. What does this actually do? The simplest description that I can give is that when you're on a website that uses any form of encryption, your computer is every so often sending something to that website and go, are you still there? How about now? Are you there now? And that website returns something back to it saying, yes, I'm still here. There is a problem with the way that worked though. And as a result, somebody could shape a request where it's like, are you still there? By the way, give me more information. And the server's like, sure. And they end up grabbing information from the server itself. What does that mean for you? Well, it means a couple of things. One, your credentials may have been stolen. Notice that I'm saying the word may and could be or up to or things like that. The problem with this exploit is that it's really hard to know if it's actually been attacked or not. Um, there's a lot of rumors saying the NSA has probably been doing it for quite some time. And let's be honest, they're not exactly the most trustworthy sorts. So the fact that they say they didn't do it tells us nothing. In general, it may have been exploited from day one. It may have never been exploited. It's probably somewhere in between. I should probably actually do that for this video, shouldn't I? So, Say for an example, you are trying to submit a password to a website and your password happens to look something like this. It's a totally awesome password, by the way. Well, if you happen to be using SSL or something like that, what your computer does is that it takes a key, the public key, and encrypts your password. So it ends up looking like this. Like this. That totally looks better. And then the server has a private key that it can undo that encryption and get back, well, that. That's generally the way encryption works. And as long as that private key is hidden, it works really well. The problem is once the moment somebody gets that private key, they can encrypt everything that you're doing. And that's bad. 
The reason why that's bad is that you can say, for instance, fake being Google. You can stand up a server and go, by the way, I'm Google. It'll have a valid key because they've stolen the key and all of your information will go through that fake Google and steal a lot of things. Potentially, this could have an extremely wide reaching impact. In reality, probably not much. What all you should really be doing is change your passwords. You probably want to change your passwords. All of them. All of them. Just don't try to keep any passwords. Don't rotate them. Don't share them between things. Just change everything. If you're currently using the same password for everything, which let's be honest, there's probably a good chunk of you that are. One, that's bad. Bad. Two, now would be a great time to fix that problem because theoretically, if any one of the sites that you used that password on and say the same email address or something like that, and that password was taken by whatever means, they can now access everything else using that password, which may include like banking information and Amazon and other fun things. And you really don't want to be a victim of a password hijack. My recommendation when it comes to passwords is to use a password manager. There's a lot of them different. A lot of different password managers out there that each have different pros, different cons. Honestly, it doesn't particularly matter. KeyPass or LastPass. These are the ones that I have experience with. They generally work the same. It's basically a program that keeps all of your passwords in one place. That password database itself is encrypted and you put a password on that. The idea is that you are the only one that knows the master password. And from there, you can get all of your normal passwords. And as long as you don't use that master password anywhere else, it's reasonably secure. What you do is you take all of the sites and give them completely random passwords. Just don't even try to memorize them. There'll be a couple of sites that you'll want to keep passwords that you can memorize. Things like, say for instance, you have to type in your Google password on a somewhat regular basis to, I don't know, your mobile phone. You probably want your Google password to be something you can actually type. Now, if you're somebody like me, more of a techie type person, it's probably not that big of a deal to type in a 15 character random alphanumeric uppercase lowercase symbol password. Random people though, not so much. Um, I'll link to a different XKCD comic for the correct battery horse staple style. That might work a little better for you. And well, it's silly enough. It's still not the greatest method of password detection. It's still vulnerable to a lot of things, but it's a lot better than using something like, oh, I don't know, your cat's name. No zone is not in fact one of my passwords or soon or boo. So in conclusion for you that just want to know, what do I do about the situation? One, you want to change all of your passwords. Just change them all. Don't try to figure out which ones are valid, which ones aren't. It's probably safer to just assume everything is compromised. Change all of your passwords. Two, in order to change your passwords, you probably want to use a password manager. That could be something like a notebook next to your computer if you're not too concerned about physical security, a la somebody breaking into your house and getting that notebook, or a husband getting into that notebook where you might have things that you don't want him to see, or a kid, or something like that. If you're not too concerned about physical security in that respect, a notebook would probably work. If you're going to use a computer-based thing, LastPass, KeePass, 1Password, there's a lot of different products. It doesn't particularly matter which one you choose as long as you choose one and use it. I personally use KeePass. It works on Windows, Mac, Mac, Linux, Android, I think there's even an iOS client, I wouldn't know. Works on everything I care about and works really well. That's it. That's all you have to deal with.